What's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Fortman Podcast. Today's guest has been a dream of mine since I first started it. When I had this idea to start my podcast, I had three dream guests. It was Rich Froning, Tim Tebow, and Craig Rochelle. And I've had uh, I've had Tim on, and here's Rich. So Rich, so I'm so thankful that you're joining me today on the podcast. Thanks for making my dreams come true. <laughs> awesome. Glad to glad to be here, man. Yeah. Well, if you're listening and you don't know who Rich is, Rich is a husband, a father, believer. He uh, runs CrossFit Mayhem, and he's also the fittest man in history. And if you're watching this, you're only seeing his upper shoulders and his head, uh, but he is the fittest man in history. And I'm so uh, just so stoked for our conversation today. Yeah, looking forward to it. I don't know about history. You know, I, I guess in the the modern era, maybe of CrossFit, that's that's the the term. Well, what because what because your your film says that you're the fittest man in history. Yeah, that was not mine. I did not. Uh, that wasn't my idea. You didn't approve the language of it. No, no, no. Uh, I, you know, four time individual CrossFit game champion and six time team champion. I'll take that. Now there you go. All right. Well, uh, we'll we'll say more so the fittest in the modern era. That that can be our. Uh, there we go. That can be. Well, not only are you the four times individual and six time teams, but you're also the. Uh, most wins in the sport history, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, uh, I mean, we're relatively young in the sport, but uh, it's been a good ride for sure so far. Yeah. So for you, I mean, obviously CrossFit is what you're more so known for. Where did that love come from? And did, when did you know that you were actually good at the sport? Uh, yeah. I mean, I grew up playing sports, playing baseball was kind of my main thing. Went to, to college to play a little bit of baseball, mm -hmm. decided in that process that, um, it was just, it wasn't, wasn't in the cards. And so came home from that and, uh, was a firefighter at, uh, in Cookville for four years. I did this program where they'd pay, pay my tuition and I I'd do that. And, uh, in the process was getting my degree in exercise science. One of my professors was the head strength and conditioning coach and showed me some videos and at, back at that time it, and still is, but, um, it was very big in the military police fire community. And so I started doing CrossFit in July of 2009 with my cousin in my, my dad's barn and really didn't know you could compete in it, to be honest, and had all intentions of getting my master's um, in exercise science and then being a firefighter kind of for the rest of my life. And so uh, found out you could compete, decided to sign up for a competition and uh, actually won my first competition, which was a, a sectional. And it went into... Um, a qualifier, which was regionals, and then won the regional and then went to the CrossFit Games. And in that process, uh, got second at the CrossFit Games, which we don't really talk about much. Uh, kind of forget about that. Yeah, well, well I, I want to talk about that story in a little bit because I think that's – Yeah. Because that story it's, is really what propels so much what you're doing now. But um, backtracking back to baseball, what uh, – like when you were playing baseball, what, what style tr workouts were you doing then and did you – like when you started doing CrossFit, did you miss that style of working out or were you full on in CrossFit? Yeah, we pretty much did uh full, full on pump sesh, you know, the normal meathead type style things. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, baseball, you always thought that uh, your power came from your forearms and your arms, which we all know that it's, it's kind of the lower half stuff. So I wish now looking back, I would have done a lot more CrossFit style stuff, not necessarily CrossFit, but, um, you know, more of the explosive Olympic lifts. Uh, just some lower body strengthening, but in the pro when we were in high school and stuff, it was just, Hey, look good, look good with the Jersey on really. Yeah. And so, uh, that was the, the main state. Yeah. I mean, I've in the recent years, I've added a little bit more of that stuff back, uh, just cause it's a little bit more fun and a less, little less painful. Yeah. Dude, that was, that, that was like my main thing was the, was the, was the wrist roller. The wrist I, curls, I would yeah. walk yeah. around our house just for hours, just doing this. I was trying to get huge forearms. <laughs> Do you remember the like crusher thing? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I used to have one of those in my car that it would just ride around and use yeah. the, the forearm crusher. Yeah. Well, I visited you I visited you last July and I made the joke to you that you guys work out more in a day than I do in a week. Right. And I was just blown away by like just the motivation and just the dedication that that you guys dedicate to the sport. Granted, I visited you like two weeks before the games. Which, Crunch time, yeah. Which, yeah, which, that which, was, uh, which really, was on. Which really wasn't the smartest time to, to, make, <laughs> to make an appearance there. But have you always been, like, has that been instilled in you just for your life, the motivation and the just the dedication to, if you're going to do something, you know, come like go at it 100%. Like, have you always been that motivated of a guy? And where does that come from? Yeah, for sure. You know, I, um, my, both of my parents, um, 
they're the hardest two working people in any room that they walk into. Uh, they just made up chores for us as a kid, which I hated, but now I'm super appreciative of it. Appreciative of it. Appreciative of it. Whatever. Appreciate. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So I mean, when I was growing up, we there was just things to do, and it felt like busy work to me at the time, but um, was definitely very crucial in in who I am as a man and and the work ethic that I've had uh, throughout my career. So that, and then having a, a really good high school baseball coach that um, was, was, uh, you know, all about hard work and, and pushing and, and doing those types of things. And it, it also helps being super competitive. I'm one of 32 first cousins, 25 on my mom's side, 25 of us are boys on my mom's side. And so everything was a competition growing up and uh, hated losing. So the combination of hard work, competition, and, and genetics uh, has played into my success for sure. Yeah. Were you, were you the most athletic cousin? Uh, not really. I mean, it all really depended on your age. You know, I'm number five out of the, the 25. So, you know, my cousin Harrison was super athletic and he's the oldest. And, it, you know, it kind of it was fun. We last weekend, uh, my one of my younger cousins got married. And so he had uh, all of us in the wedding. So there were 16 of us groomsmen and we all played flag football the morning of his wedding, which oh, awesome. in hindsight is a bad idea for pictures in case of a black eye. And then I almost took out his ACL. Uh, we went for a jump ball and I just kind of raked the ball down as we were coming down. And when he came down, his knee or his foot went behind his his back. Uh, he turned out to be okay, but of course it had to be me that, that, that happens to that yeah. almost tears ACL. Yeah. So, uh, it's fun, you know, it's, it's yeah. fun to, to get back out there with those guys and, and, uh, we're all old now and it's a, still super competitive, but a little less cutthroat now. Would you have felt bad if he had a torn ACL kind of on his foot? felt <laughs> awful. I looked down and I could just see it. His like, his ankle was basically touching his ear and he's a big guy. He's like six, two. And so, uh, I did not feel real good about that, but he, oh he got up, shook it off and his said his knees a little sore, but he's good. That'd he could walk terrible. down the aisle without a limp. Not a bit terrible. Well, you yeah. said that you've been doing CrossFit since 2009, a few yep. weeks ago, a few months ago, you just announced that you're not going to be competing in teams anymore. Um, you've had a long, you've had, you've had such a long stretch. Why do you feel like, you know, what was it about last season that kind of made you feel like now was the time to do that? And if, do you feel like if you would have kept going that you would have kept winning teams? I think, I mean, I feel like you could have kept going for another 10 years and you would have never lost again. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of dedication that goes into that. You know, when, when we had my, our first daughter, Lakeland, um, I decided to step away from individuals just because the obsession it took to uh, compete at that level. You know, I, I just... I knew that she and, and, you know, our plan to have more kids in the future were needed to take the forefront and we're going to take the forefront. And, you know, as the kids have now, I've got three and I can still compete at a really high level on the team and still uh, do that. But, you know, the kids are kids schedule are getting a little bit more complicated. I'm getting a little older and um, I still enjoy working out, still enjoy training. But, you know, if I do decide to every couple of years or every year, who knows, do the master side of, of CrossFit, you know, I'm 35 now. So I, there's a, a completely different masters individual category that I'm now eligible for. And so one, um, I'll be able to kind of make that decision year to year and it, it not affect three other people's lives and livelihoods. And then on the team, it's just, it's hard to, um, match up schedules. And then, like I said, the kids are getting a little older and wanting to start playing some sports and do those things. And I don't want to miss those things. Um, you know, I don't want to miss those from the kids. And then I also don't want to be on a team where I feel like I'm letting everybody else down. So the stress of that, um, and so it'll be a year to year thing. And depending on how, how healthy I am and, and how I feel, um, I'll compete year to year. We'll see. I've got a shoulder thing. I've got a couple of tears in my rotator cuff. I'm trying to, to rehab right now and it's actually going really well. So, um, awesome. just, yeah. And so, you know, over the years, it's the physical side of it is one thing. And I feel pretty good for a 35 year old that literally beats up his body for a living. But, uh, the emotional and mental side of it is, uh, it takes a toll on you. You know, it's just, it's tough every year, year in a year out. It's, it's fun. It's fun to win. Um, but it takes a little bit out of the fun when it, when it's expected every year. So it's just a little bit different. This podcast is sponsored by Faithful Counseling. 
almost two years ago now, when we had our child, I really did not know how to deal with having a child. Obviously, I've never had one before. And when Honey was born, it was such an interesting period. I was hardly sleeping. Me and Sadie's uh, communication was different than it was before. And I needed someone that I could just talk to, whether it was a mentor or a counselor. I'd never been through uh, that experience before. And it really was a curveball that life threw at me. And having someone that I could talk to and uh, talk through things I struggled with or talk through things I was confused about was super helpful for me during that period. And I know that for all of us, life is so full of twists and turns and just throws those curveballs all the time, and it's important to show up for yourself, and it's important for you to show up for the ones that you love. And if you have needs, Faithful Counseling will assess them and match you with your own licensed professional therapist who is also a practicing Christian. And Faithful Counseling is not a crisis line. It's not a self-help tool uh, for you to use. It's professional counseling done securely online. And I feel like therapy is so important. You know, you having, having someone that you can talk to that is not really affiliated with your situation, and it's not a close friend, but it's someone that's outside of your life that can look in and help speak into things. It's just healthy. For me, having someone that I can talk to, that I can trust, that I know is not going to go tell my business to someone else, um, it really helps me open up. And I just love the fact that I can talk to somebody and they're not going to judge me for things that I'm going through, but that they're going to listen. And let me tell you why faithful counseling is such a great option for you to try out. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so that you don't have to be on camera if you don't want to. And Faithful Counseling is also more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available if you need that. And Faithful Counseling user SU says, Roland is very caring. He checks in throughout the week and always seems to care. So right now, you can visit faithfulcounseling.com slash huff and get the professional faith-based counseling that you deserve. They've even got a special offer for 4-8-Men podcast listeners. Right now, you can get 10% off your first month at faithfulcounseling.com slash huff. Thanks again to Faithful Counseling for sponsoring this episode. Yeah, how, has that been, I mean, I'm sure that's a difficult, because it, like you said, it really is such a mental and such an emotional taxing thing alongside just physical. How do you feel like you like battle against just the day in, day out of, of just keeping up with it? The grind, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, we all know that, you know, we get better um, from adversity and things that are hard. You know, nobody ever really makes any vast improvements in the, any area of their life when you're stagnant and when there's no um, hardship or no trials or you're not, you know, pushing yourself. Um, but, you know, for me, I feel like it's almost time to push in a different area or find something, something a little bit different. Um to, to push or to compete in, you know, I've been doing this for shoot 13, 14 years and, um, I still enjoy it, still enjoy the fitness and, and working out. Um, but you know, it's just time to do something a little bit different or a little bit. That's why, you know, we were talking before we started, but hunting, um, has been a, a good, a good push for me, you know, being out in the outdoors away from all phones and electronics and stuff like that. And, uh, just being out in nature, but then also kind of pursuing, you know, people don't want to hear it, but you're also competing with the animal as well. And so, um, mm-hmm. it's been a, it's been a ton of fun to do that. This, especially this last year, I've gotten super yeah. into it. Um, and, and, and it's a fitness grind. It really is. It's yeah. a grind. It's a physical, you know, everybody physical, obviously, because you're up and down these mountains, but the emotional and just, um, uh, it's a different, different emotion, emotional tax and, um, psychological it's, it's just, it's tough. Yeah. You know, it's a grind. Yeah. Well, you said earlier, you know, the first time you competed in the CrossFit Games, you came in second, and didn't you? It wasn't. Did you really only come in second because of the rope climb thing that you didn't do? Uh, no, I mean, well, I, lo- I, I lost by three points, uh, but Graham Graham won it outright. You know, he he did exactly what he needed to do throughout the weekend, and I didn't have the the skill of climbing that rope. Um, thanks to my, I blame my dad. But yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Well, well, weren't you weren't you a fighter fighter? So shouldn't that have been the one that you were really good at? firefighters don't climb ropes you know like uh we just didn't yeah that's you know maybe a big cities but in yeah. small town cookville we don't have yeah. a, a fire station that's two stories well we have one that's two stories but it doesn't have a pole in it so yeah. uh yeah yeah it's uh the problem was you know i could get up the rope fine if i didn't do 50 things before that and weren't exhausted and all that so uh there was a lot to learn there and you know kind of you've you've prefaced it a little bit, but, um, if I hadn't have fallen off that rope or not climbed that rope and, and won the games that year, I'm not sure that, uh, we'd be sitting here today doing, having this talk. Yeah. Why do you think, 
like, what do you think the trajectory of your life would have looked like if you did win? And like, why do you, because I, obviously I know your faith has, has become a huge part because of that. Your tattoo yeah. has been influenced by that. Like, what do you, do you really think that if you would have won that you're like, you still would have idolized the thing that you were doing and not got. Yeah. You know, I, I go back to, you know, we were talking earlier that, you know, when I was growing up, uh, everything was a competition with my cousins, with whatever it was. And so for me, my identity was always in whatever I was doing competing wise, you know, if it was baseball, if it was football, it was, you know, any challenge that I was firefighting that had become kind of an identity and, you know, my success or who I was, um, in that specific activity, um, was defined who I was. And so, um, you know, I, you don't really, I don't want to say I hit rock bottom by any means. Like I wasn't, you know, wasn't living on the street or doing drugs or anything like that. But, you know, for me, CrossFit was that whatever that current idol was at the time and my current identity. And so having the failure and some people would say you're an idiot for saying you got, you know, getting second and counting that as a failure. But to me, that was a complete failure. And for me, that was rock bottom. You know, if, if your life is competing and your life is who you are in competition and, and to get second and not win something, um, it was, it was a dark place and a hard place to land, but saying that, you know, I would have continued to, you know, whether it was, CrossFit or move on to the next thing, insert whatever, uh, that would be my, my identity. And that's what we know is the things of the world, uh, are fleeting and they're not things that, um, that will, will last. Um, and so finding my faith in that, you know, I grew up kind of in faith, but more of a, uh, out of necessity than anything. Um, it, uh, this this really brought me back to center, I guess. So yeah, and then that's when Galatians six fourteen became became your thing. Yeah, yeah. So you know, growing, falling, getting second, whatever you want to say. I had put so much of who I was into CrossFit and my place in CrossFit, and it was kind of just you know, the new the new stepping stone, the new idol, and and for that to get pulled out from under me. Um, luckily, I had some uh, some really good friends um, a mentors, you know, a couple of different pe people, um, in my life at that time that were like, Hey, you know, what, uh, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? And so in my head, I'm like, heck yeah. You know, I was born Catholic, uh, baptized Catholic. And then when we moved to Tennessee, uh, we actually switched to kind of a Presbyterian church and we went to a Baptist church. And so I grew up in the church, but it was, uh, more out of necessity than anything. It was something that I had to do. And, yeah. you know, when I needed something, that's when I would go to the Bible and uh, cherry pick a verse that fit whatever situation or whatever I needed at, at that time. And, you know, that was that it was more of like, hey, God, what can you do for me? What um, if Santa Claus God is, as they, I guess the saying goes. And so I yeah. um, had some got into a, a good group. Like I said, my boss at the time, Chip Pugh, we would have Bible studies, uh, which were, was pretty new to me. I'm kind of like, well, this is this is different than what I'm used to, you know, it's more of like you show up on Sunday, listen to a sermon and that's it. You know, you get your kind of fill there. And so, um, it was good to actually get in there and study it and, and realize it. And in that process, um, just reading about Jesus and going through the gospel. I, we started in Romans, but from there I went back to, to Matthew and went through the whole gospel and was like, man, I'm not living like Jesus called me to live. And so, um, that's when I, I kind of rededicated my life to Christ and, and, that was my identity and got baptized again. And they got the tattoo Galatians six fourteen. may I never boast in anything except for the cross of Lord Jesus Christ, which has been crucified to me and I, the world. And for me, that was, Hey, it doesn't matter what I do or who I am in CrossFit. Um, that it's, it's Christ that, that should be showing. And, you know, people are like, well, are you, so you're saying, you know, God wants you to win or you only started winning because of, uh, you know, that was God's favor you know, who knows? I don't know the answer to that question, but I do know that I can compete from a place of, um, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, obviously I'm super competitive. Those things don't go away, but I can compete knowing that no matter what happens, I'm going to be okay. And, uh, whatever God's will is for my life, it's, it's, that's what it is. And for me, that was a place that I could compete from and still compete from, um, uh, 
and is is a, a place of power versus a place of you know hey what can you do for me I'm I'm trying to glorify him in all that I do yeah that's so good well when I was there we kind of talked about it a little bit so after you had that moment um, back at the first CrossFit Games how do you feel like you battled against like that urge and that impulse to go back to idolize him because I mean you know if you dedicate so much time to it it's easy to 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 be consumed by it so how do you feel like you yeah. battled against that impulse to want to idolize something that you do or that you spend so much time investing your yourself into man it's a it's a daily battle it's not something that you uh, you overcome on you know one time it's not something that you're gonna uh do it you know pray for it and it's gonna immediately go away you know that's not yeah. real life it's not uh the way we're made we're we're selfish and very uh, self-seeking, self-righteous people. That's who we are. You know, it's our nature. And so, you know, I battle it something daily. I battle, you know, it's like, all right, Hey, let's, what I've, the best way to describe what I, I kind of do is, um, at night faith, family, fitness. And I put, you know, I have three categories that I, those are kind of my anchor values and things that I, um, I feel like define my life and who I am. And so I'm like, all right, how did I do faith is first. And was I, did I get in the word today? Did I, you know, put some, put some metrics behind it, um, uh, and kind of rank how it, how I did today, family, same thing and fitness. Um, and you know, you have to have a short memory when you do really well and, and do good in all three things. And you have to have a short memory when you do bad in all three things, cause tomorrow's a new day and it's just a, a constant thing and a consistency thing. And, you know, we're, we're human. And so, mm -hmm. um, I try to, like I said, have some, um, you know, some real objective, uh, self critique, I guess. And, and luckily I've got a good group of people around me as well that, um, I feel like will tell me every once in a while, Hey, you know, this is something that I see and I, I open it. And I also do the same with the, the close knit group of guys that I have around. Yeah. And my wife is real, real good at telling me when I screw up. Yeah. No, your wife is awesome. She was... Yeah, she's Spitfire. She was so great. The last few weeks, the most DMs that I've gotten has been about my hat. Uh, what kind it is, where I got it from, and everyone just seems to be super interested in it. Well, it's a melon hat. They sent it to me, and the first time I ever heard about melon was about a year ago. My brother got me one um, for a gift, and I've been using it everywhere I go. I use it when I work out. I use it on the boat. I just got back from a hunting trip. I wore it um, there. I wear it in the airports. I really just wear it everywhere I go. It's my favorite hat that I have. It's super durable. It's water resistant. It floats on the water. I think that the look is super sleek. It fits my head. Usually I have a, I have a tough time. I have, a, I have a smaller head, so usually I have a hard time having hats that fit my head. And this hat is perfect. I love it. And it's been my go-to for the last year or so. And the biggest difference for me between the melon hat that I have and just other ones is definitely the comfort, uh, the functionality, and the durability. This is the best hat that I've ever had. And you can even throw it in the washing machine, and it comes out looking new every time. Melon also offers free U.S. standard shipping, free and easy 30-day returns, and a two-year warranty. And Melon is giving 4 Man Podcast listeners an exclusive offer of 20% off your first order. Go to melon.com slash Christian and use code Christian for 20% off. If Melon does not become your favorite hat, send it back for a full refund. No questions asked. Again, that's melon.com slash Christian and use code Christian to get 20% off. Pick up one and let me know what y'all think. Well, when I was there, I loved how, like I said, we would train for like four to six hours a day. And the whole time we would be in the barn working out, you'd be playing worship the whole time. Yep. Um, why Why is that something that, that you've implemented into your training? And is that, you know, because because for me, I, like on this podcast, I talk a lot about it's easy for me if I'm listening to worship when I'm in the gym to not be consumed with, you know, how I look with what I'm doing. Because for me, it's like if I'm, doing biceps and I'm listening to Drake, you know, then I'm look, I'm, yeah. I'm like yeah. looking at my pump, yeah. you know, but if it's yeah. like, but if it's more worship for me, it just helps me kind of posture my heart. So is that something that you've kind of found in your training that if you listen to worship when you're working out, that that helps you kind of fill the buckets, like, or kind of fill those things like you talked about faith, family, fitness. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's, it's one, I like the music. Uh, it's, it's good. I, I feel like for me though, it's, it's way more motivating. I, I personally, um, I, I guess I can't use the word hate on this podcast, but I can't stand Drake. Uh, but, you know, my, my go to if it was, you know, non 
if we're going in that same kind of area, it's M&M. And, uh, but what I've noticed is any time that's on and every once in a while, we'll throw some of that stuff on. But for the most part, it's I'd say 99 percent of the time it's worship. Um, but, you know, sometimes if M&Ms, I just feel I find myself angry, you know, and like, yeah, for just sure. my my brain goes somewhere else. And it's just when it's positive in positive out type stuff. And so uh, I just feel way better when it's worship music and and as weak as that sounds, because, you know, like we shouldn't be influenced by that type of stuff. But you are. You can't help it. And uh, it goes back to the vulnerability as people. And um uh, and so worship music, just one, it motivates me a lot more. I just, you know, it reminds me kind of where my center is and, and who I am. And uh, but then, you know, positive in, positive out, you hear that stuff all day. It, it You just feel better. Or I feel better for sure. Yeah. How have you found ministry moments in fitness? Yeah, I mean, I think it goes to the the kind of the adversity thing, you know, like we're we grow in adversity. And so um, anytime in the Bible, you know, David, I always kind of come back to David. David is, you know, David screwed up how many times and, uh, to be a man after God's own heart, you know, like I, I, the big ministry moment is obviously the, the, the fail and the rope climb and, and, um, you know, having that kind of epiphany of, you know, faith is, is needs to be my center and needs to be who I am. And I think, you know, there's probably too many to list because it happens, happens daily for sure. Yeah. Have there been people, you know, whether in the CrossFit games or just people in fitness in general, because, you know, it's, it's cool. Not only do you like, are you a faith, you know, a faithful man, but you're also like, you also live it out. You know, it's not just something that you believe, but it's actually something that practices that you put into place. And when, when you look at your life, you, you can see how you live it out. So how have people, you know, like, have you had conversations like at the CrossFit Games with people just whether it's seeing your tattoo or seeing, um, you know, if 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 you don't win, you're not as distraught as some other people. Like, how have how how has your faith practically like shaped people around you that have been curious about about Christianity? Yeah, I think you know we've got a really good crew here. I wouldn't necessarily say it's just me. You know, I have um, a lot of the people that we work work that work here at Mayhem, kind of the behind the scenes people. We um, we, we pray, you know, our, our mayhem values are faith, family, fitness, and service. And so, um, you know, we try to live that out through social, through uh, our mayhem athlete tracks. There's actually a mayhem faith track in there. And so there's just, it's, you know, you can talk the talk, but for the most part, you know, I've had more conversations with people by not you know, letting them come to me, you know, not being super pushy with it, not super, um, you know, asking them tough, you know, questions to put them on the spot. Um, I think that people see, you know, and, and not to say that I'm perfect, you know, I've screwed up a bunch and, um, it's, you know, it's something that I try to, if, if I screw up, come back and say, Hey, that was my bad. You know, it may take me a little while, but, um, I think as, as people, we have to, and, and that comes with maturity for sure. You know, when I was younger, I definitely wouldn't do that. Um, but, you know, trying to live, live like Jesus did, you know, and, and we're going to screw that up because we are human. And, and when we do that to ask for forgiveness, but I think like just to, to live it out. And, and that for me, for the most part has had the most, has opened the most doors versus, you know, trying to, to have these conversations. We go through, you know, email after email or, um, you know, conversation after conversation that people just come up and say, Hey, you know, watching a video, I just, I just went to my Bible, you know, there was just felt like there was something, something missing. And so that for sure makes it all worth it. You know, it's not about, obviously, you know, it's been great, uh, from a business perspective and all that for the fitness wise, and I can provide for my family, but you know, the faith stuff is, is what's really important and, and is, is awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, something that I love about you. Um, so obviously, we talked earlier. You've won individual four times. You've won teams six times, and a super cool statistic. You know, you've won teams six times, and each team has been different, which I think speaks a lot to to, to your character. I think that speaks a lot to who you are. So not only I, I think that shows not only are you a good leader, but you're also a good teammate. So how do you feel like you? Um, how do you feel like you lead well? How do you feel like you're a good teammate? Because, you know, like, like you said earlier, people's schedules are different, are different to get on the same page as that. 
But I mean, I mean, to win six times and have three different people on your team each time, it's pretty crazy. So how do you feel like how do you feel like you lead well while also still being a good teammate to those around you? Uh, you, we've had some incredible, I will say we've had some incredible athletes along the way. So, you know, it, it isn't always, um, me, but you know, I think the, the kind of lead by example type, like I'm not going to ask anybody to do anything that I wouldn't do. I'm going to be in there, um, suffering with everybody, um, uh, maybe sometimes suffering or making them suffer a little too much. Uh, you know, the, the problem could be that, you know, the reason the team changes every year is because they get burnt out from me. Uh, we always joke that there's probably a three or four year uh, shelf life with most athletes hanging out with me because it just happens. You know, I'm abrasive. Um, but, you know, it's just like I said, I think it's the being right there, uh, not not being I'm not a rah rah get in your face type guy. It's more like, hey, we're here to do a job. I'm going to work with you. Um, kind of the, the, un you know, we, there's a lot of communication, a lot of open communication. Um, things are, I feel like, you know, uh, others might, um, argue, but for the most part, it's pretty democratic on how we, we either do the programming or make up the workouts and, and have never been super pushy, uh, you know, within reason, you know, if somebody I don't feel like is training, uh, to the standard that the other three are, or, um, uh, it's you know, there might be something said, I don't really know if I've ever even had to say anything like that, but I think, um, uh, you know, the, it's, it's easy because it attracts the same type of people to this team. Um, everybody wants to work hard. Everybody has the same goal. And so, you know, that's why my team or my, uh, experience with team was so much more special because I got to share it with, with three or four other people. And, you know, even when I was an individual, I had a bunch of people that were around and helping me and, and helping me push, but, um, when I was on the floor, I didn't get to experience that with anybody else or share that experience. So um, it's pretty special to be able to share that with with other people. And so it's uh, yeah, being on a team has been been awesome. It's it's taught me a lot, um, you know, how to motivate different people differently. So it's helped me a ton in business, um, helped me with, you know, being a husband, being a, a father. And so there's just a lot to be learned with being on a team. And so um those years are way more valuable, I think, than the individual side for sure. Yeah. Well, I love, you know, obviously you, you, you talk so much about your family. You are married. You have three kids, um, which life is life is super crazy. What do you what have you learned um, like being married and being a father that you haven't learned in something like CrossFit? You know, in CrossFit, you can be a leader, but a teammate. But in the household, you're also leading your house and you're, you're a teammate with your wife. So what do you feel like you've learned? just leading your house that you haven't learned leading in a gym unconditional love god's unconditional love for us um you know especially with kids uh you know they can be the meanest rottenest thing and do the you know trice i, I go to trice and and he's just like he's just a, a trice is stone cold he's he's something else and so like they can just be do the do and say the meanest thing and then two seconds later tell you they love you and so you don't understand and, and you understand it now, unconditional love, like even with your wife, like you think you understand unconditional love. Uh, but once you have kids, you it's you understand it. You know, I, I can't fathom, you know, God, God loves us more than we love our kids. And I can't love my kids more than, you know, anything. So it's a uh, it's pretty cool. That's the, the the main takeaway I've had with, with being a father is unconditional love and, and patience. Patience is a big one too, uh, with with being having kids and with with marriage. Well, you might not be able to answer this next question. I'm going to ask you, but we'll wrap right. it up. We'll wrap it up with this last question. You might not you might not answer. You might not want to answer it. But if you had to guess, what do you think is next uh, for your career with CrossFit? Yeah, uh, you know, it'll be a year to year thing. Um, if I can get healthy this year, I might try to, to do a uh, master's next year. Um, that would be kind of the, the goal this year. We'll see, you know, it depends on looking at the season. It's pretty, um, February to April heavy. Uh, and then it, it eases off for the summer, which is pretty cool with the kids and, and doing those types of things. So as long as I can qualify and then, uh, stay fit throughout the summer, then I'll be at the CrossFit games next year. So we'll see. No, awesome. no guarantees. Yeah. No, uh, you know, nothing. How did you, how did you hurt your rotator cuff? 
I think 12 years of abusing it. It's just, uh, it's, it's got tears on the origin and insertion of the supraspinatus. And then infraspinatus has a tear somewhere. And then I've got uh, tendinosis in my infra or supra. I can't, it's, it's all, it's all jacked up. Subs gap. I think subs gap has something like that. Something yeah. like that. Man, well, yep. thanks. Thanks so much for joining me, man. I'm always encouraged by, uh, your fitness. Um, anytime I ask people who, are the, who they want on the podcast, you're always, the top answer that people give. So Appreciate thank, it. thanks for joining me. I'm encouraged by your fitness and your faith. Heck uh, yeah, man. Love you. And you the have family. to come back up to I, Cookville, I know, man. I know. And hey, y'all need to make a trip down to town to Monroe whenever we you do. want. We do. We do. We need to get you on that duck hunt we talked about. I know. We do. Yep. Phil was up here for Easter, so I talked to him for a minute. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for joining me. You're the man. I'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it, man.